Hey guys, it is Mike with the Come the Night. Welcome back to another reaction video. Today, we are taking a look at the lesbian Led Zeppelin tribute band, Greta Van Fleet. Okay, 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 sorry, that's just a joke. They're just gay. No, in all seriousness, this is three brothers and a rando got together and made a band up in Michigan and decided they were gonna sound exactly like Led Zeppelin. You guys have been friggin' obnoxious in the comment section trying to get me to review these. I think I might have done one for Song Suggestion Friday, I don't remember. But you guys won't shut up about it, so you're gonna get what you asked for. Let's start with their chart topper here, Highway Tune. Immediately, tone of the guitar is extremely so close to Jimmy Page. Then you got the uh, coming in like Robert Plant. I mean, production, instrumentation, performance, all so far spot on to Zeppelin. And he does the stereotypical Robert Plant yelling. Seriously though, just looking at these guys, they're absolutely oozing sex appeal. Like the music's good, we're gonna get into the music, but it takes more than just great music to be popular nowadays. And they absolutely bring sex appeal to the table. They are probably crushing all of the puss. All right, all right, seriously though, seriously. This guy is one fedora and a nose ring away from going on a feminist crusade about manspreading. So 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 nice. Okay, so, spoiler alert, this is a two riff song. I'm not 100% sure exactly what you want me to say about all of this. I mean, yes, it sounds exactly like Led Zeppelin. So what are my thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you at the end of the video. Yeah, they're definitely getting into it. Um, a couple of differences that I notice production-wise from Led Zeppelin. One, the drums sound very different. Now, Robert Plant definitely did have more room sound in his drums than other people of the era, but it wasn't nearly as squashed as this sound, which is not, not a bad thing. I actually think that goes in their favor that they do more of a squashed room sound. Also, I actually really like their snare sound too. It pops and bulges through really nicely. Also, I don't know if it's because recording technology has gotten better or if this is done on purpose. The bass sounds significantly different from John Paul Jones. The tone sounds a little creamier, definitely smoother, very warm. John Paul Jones's definitely was warm, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's because of just the, the natural analog distortion, because I know a lot of times back in the days, you would literally try and make a track as hot as possible to get a little bit of analog distortion in there. It gives you like a warmth, almost a growl. And they definitely did not do that on this one. To be honest with you, I mean, this is such a basic song, it's kind of hard to compare his playing style to John Paul Jones. I mean, it could be a John Paul Jones part. And because it's also such a simple song, it's even tough to compare the drummer to uh, John Bonham. Okay, yeah, he's just, it's a complete rip of Robert Plant. And I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing, but I mean, really, there's not much else to say in this song. It goes on a little bit further. They do the exact same riff with no vocals and the drums and the bass kind of chill out and then they bring it back up to the exact same thing. I mean, like, there's really not much to dissect here, people. So moving on to the other most obnoxiously Banshee yelled song, uh, Safari Song. And by Banshee yell, I mean you motherfuckers asking me to do it. Nah, caught it. Got it. Okay, I don't mean to be a giant dick, but I'm gonna be a giant dick for a second. Literally just a second. You just missed a note, that's all. Okay, moving on. But no, again, very much like a Jimmy Page intro lead type of a deal. Very, pretty much the same. You guys asked for it. It's the same as Zeppelin. Your, your greatest fears are confirmed. 
And literally another song where he does a fucking Robert Plant yell. Okay, what's up with the bare feet? I get this is supposed to be a 70s revival, but I think we've come a ways since uh, since the bare feet on stage. If you really wanted to be as postmodern as you're pretending to be right now, you would actually get some bare feet slippers and wear those on stage. Make the audience think a little bit. Come on, come on, get more creative than this. Okay, another rockin' riff that's basically a one riff, maybe two riff song. Yes, it does get you moving. Yes, it does sound like Led Zeppelin. And yes, Led Zeppelin did have a fantastic sound. I mean, all you really did was substitute one blues rock riff for another. Did basically the same vocals. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure the drums are essentially the same too. Yeah, the drums are a little different. These drums definitely sound more like what John Bonham would have done than the last one, but then again, the last one was so damn simple, it's kind of tough to say. Because if you look at the drum parts in rock and roll, I mean, those are pretty straight ahead. Boom, pa, boom, pa, boom, pa, boom, pa. Oh my God, and he has a rat tail. In any universe where you could have actually been equal with Led Zeppelin, that just made it so that'll never happen. It's okay. I absolve you from this sin, young one. All right, you know what? That's actually pretty impressive that the guitar player can come over there while playing his little thing and actually sing very similarly to his brother into the same microphone. You know what? I'll give you props on that. What was that? What was that noise? I feel like that was probably coming from the bass. I'm not sure. Yeah, definitely with this track, I can tell that it's definitely more of a John Paul Jones style on the bass. That and also in this live setting, his tone definitely sounds a lot closer to his as well. All right, the kid can play a dang good blues rock solo. Awesome. Would it be a dick move to say I'm really not that impressed? I appreciate his acrobatic skill and his endurance, and he actually does have a certain amount of precision there too. But when you get down to it, the actual movements that he's doing are relatively simple. Like I know Ryan could crush that drum solo, without a doubt. No pressure, Ryan. <laughs> Poor guy's running out of breath at the end. All right, so final thoughts on this. Yes, they emulate Led Zeppelin extraordinarily close. Now, there's a number of people that say that, oh, what, where's the talent in that? Actually, there's a shit ton of talent involved in that. I was actually just talking to my, my first guitar teacher ever, uh, like yesterday, actually. We were talking about how when he was little, he loved trying to mimic as closely uh, his guitar heroes. And that is not an easy feat at all. I fucking dare you guys to go out and try that. Even for extremely accomplished technical players like Petrucci, it's not necessarily easy for them to sound exactly like Hendrix or exactly like Stevie Ray Vaughan. So the fact that each of them can mimic so closely the entire band Led Zeppelin, like, that is fantastic talent, like really good skill. And I don't care what anyone says, they definitely did it on purpose. I mean, whether they were trying to get famous from it on purpose is another thing, but I mean, they absolutely wanted to sound like Led Zeppelin. You don't get that close to it without trying. Nope, nope. I lied. This is not actually a Led Zeppelin tribute band. I don't think he buries the beater. Actually, I really have no clue. I couldn't see his feet whatsoever, but I'm sure they bury the beater in some other way. Here's the crux with Greta Van Fleet for me. They are skyrocketing to fame right now because they're a bunch of young guys that sound exactly like Led Zeppelin. I don't, like, no one wants to insult them and say that this is the case because they won't say it to their faces, but let's be honest, that's why. When someone tells you about Greta Van Fleet, they don't say, hey, this band is awesome because their music is amazing. They say, hey, this band is awesome. They sound exactly like Led Zeppelin. That's not meant to be an insult. That's just the reality of the situation. So here's where they really are at a very important crossroads for the uh, fame of their band. They are working on a new release, a full length album. And what music comes out of that album is going to be extremely critical. If they release another album that sounds exactly like Led Zeppelin, 
I think you're going to see them take off further in fame, but not much further. While these guys are still extremely well known in most of the underground rock scenes, they still haven't spilt over completely into the popular realm yet. And they can get away with doing another Zeppelin-esque album or Zeppelin-esque recording and get break into that mainstream because they haven't experienced it yet. I think you might start to find a number of your underground fans starting to slip away. If they really want to solidify themselves as their own individual rock group and not just a Led Zeppelin tribute band, they're going to need to have a sound change. You can still keep your core of Zeppelin and keep that very apparent, but it can't sound like a one for one. And that in and of itself brings some other worries for me. They're signed to Republic or Lava or whatever the fuck it is, one of one, some record label. My biggest fear is they're going to have some producer come in and go, hey, you know what's selling right now? And fucking ruin it. What makes it doubly tough is you've already been pigeonholed into Led Zeppelin. If you steer away from that too far, are you gonna lose your fan base? I don't know, it's a really tricky situation. I honestly don't expect them to go super far. They're gonna need to do something about the novelty of them sounding like Led Zeppelin. They're, they're gonna have to address that. And even if they do address it, it's not guaranteed success. But I will say this, they are extremely talented guys. I've watched a, a number of interviews with them. They seem like super chill guys, really cool. And I honestly do wish you the best of luck. Those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video and want to help me make better videos, you can go to the link in the description of my Patreon page, pledge some money to me every month. Or if you don't want to do a rolling pledge, you can tip me on PayPal. If you want some cool merch, I have a merch link down there. Or you can just follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on!